Hello, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you, yes, another pattern by Purple Iguana on Ravelry. I love her patterns. They're easy, they're elegant, and well, they're easy, which, you know, that's what I go for because you can create some really beautiful things without having to get all freaky freaky, you know, with repeats and so forth. This is very, very simple. And I absolutely love what she did. And this is called On Butterfly Wings. Yes. And this is super duper easy. It's lovely. It's lacy. And I used, this was Karen Big Cakes in, I believe it was like a mulberry colorway. I can't remember the exact name of it, but absolutely gorgeous for the fall season. And this was very, very simple. You can make it as big or as small as you want to. And since it starts right up here in this top section where your neckline is, uh, it creates a beautiful V. Now, she used Lion Brands Mandala in a size I hook. Me, I used a size I hook, but this is a worsted weight yarn. Now, an I hook that is a 5.5 millimeter hook. And I still have this much left over from my original ball. And so it's the size that I made. It's not a, a rather large shawl. It's more of a, a shawlette. But, you know, you can make it whatever size you want and use whatever size hook corresponds to the yarn that you're using. You know, experiment. You know, if you want something that's a lot more lacy, go bigger in the hook size. You know, you can do whatever's, you know, comfortable for you. And of course, I'm going to put a link to the pattern in the description box down below. And uh, so please give her, you know, a look. She's got lots of great patterns and I've done a number of her patterns on tutorials in here. So without further ado, let's get started. Alrighty, row one. So to begin with, I have my size I 5.5 millimeter hook and I've got my worsted weight yarn. I figure I'll use the same stuff that I used for the shawl that I just showed you. Now to begin with, there are a number of ways. You know, you can use the magic ring, etc., etc. But you know that I like to do things, you know, a little my own way. So I'm going to start with, of course, our slip knot. And we need to work a, a spine, what is referred to as a spine, into the main ring. Now, so you could create your magic ring, you could create, um, you know, a, a chaining of three or four, do a slip stitch to that first chain to create a ring, like you would do a granny square. But for me, I'm going to use this first chain as my initial, you know, main or magic ring. So what we need to do is to create the spine, we need a total of five double crochets and four chain spaces. So to do that, we've got our initial chain, then I'm going to chain up three, one, two, three for my double crochet, and then one more for the chain one space. So it's a total of five chain stitches. Then going into that first chain, double crochet, chain one, another double crochet into that same stitch, chain one, another double crochet into that first stitch. And it will open up on you, but that's okay because you can cinch it closed real easy. So I've got a total of four because this first chaining up counted as a double, so I need to chain one more, and then double crochet into that first chain one more time. So I've got one, two, three, four, and five, separated by chain one spaces. And then you can cinch this up nice and closed, now or later, whenever. And that is row one. Okie dokie. Alrighty, row two. Okay, so now, 
at the beginning of the rows, the pattern does state to do a chaining of two, not a chaining of three. And in this instance, I'm actually inclined to agree with Purple Iguana. Um, it creates a nice straight edge as we go, and you'll see what I mean as we go on. So we're going to start with a chaining of two and turn the work. Now into this first chain one space, we need to do a shell, and that's going to be um, composed, excusez-moi, of five double crochets all into this chain one space. So that is one and two, three, four, and five. Okay. Then into the next chain one space, single crochet, and then to scoot over to the next chain one space, chain three, and then single crochet into that next chain one space, and then into the last chain one space, so to speak, five double crochets again. We're making another shell, so that would be one, two, three, four, and five. Now, because we started over here, it's a little, a little difficult to see, but we had a, a chaining up of two. Well, we need to create something similar on this side. Is it exact? No, but it actually works. Going to do at the end of this row, it's going to be a chaining of one and a double crochet into that space. Now, also, you could go into one of the stitches. It would be going up two or three stitches, you know, chain-wise, going into the stitch. Personally, I find that it's easier to just go into the space, okay? That is just me. You know, you can do what works for you, by all means, but this is what worked for me, okay? And that is the end of row two. Isn't that pretty? Alrighty, for row three, I'm gonna start right in. And now for row three, into this space, we need to do what is called a V stitch. Now the V is basically a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So what I'm gonna do is start by chaining up two as if it were my double crochet, and chain one more. So that's my double crochet and chain one. This pattern, like I said, it's a little bit different than some others that I've done, you know, as far as what is construed as a double crochet. Um, so we've got the chaining of two, which counts as a double, another chain, which counts as the chain one space, then into this first space, just one double crochet. So that is our V. Now, Am I taking liberties with the pattern? Perhaps I am, but you know, you can follow along with the pattern exactly as it is, or you can follow me, whichever, you know, I just, this is how I did the entire pattern and I found that it worked for me. So there you go. So from here, chain one, and then into the third double crochet of this shell, we do a single crochet. So that's one, two, and three. So right into the third, single crochet, okay, chain one again. Now, into this chain three space, we need to create another spine. You know, the spine is always in the exact center of the piece. So to create the spine, it is again, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double, chain one, double, chain one, and I've got four. I need a total of five 
five double crochets with a chain one space in between each. So I just need one more. All right, so I've got my five doubles and then chain one. And then again into the third double crochet of the shell. Now it can be a little bit tricky to find where it is because we have the single crochet right here. So we're going right past that one. So that's one, two, and three into that third one with a single crochet. As long as you don't mix up your single crochets and your double crochets, you know, you'll be fine. Trust me. You know, just be sure, you know, to sort of pick apart your stitches. See, like right there, there's my single. You know, don't confuse the two. Otherwise, you're going to get a little bit lost. So after doing my single into the third, another chain, and into this last space where we created our two chains for our first double, we need to do another V. So going to do that right into here. That's a double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. And like I said, I know I'm taking some liberties, but it worked for me. And that is the end of row three. Alrighty, row four. This is where things really start to do the whole repetition thing. All right, so basically right now, See, right down here is where we had our, our shell. Well, we need to do that again. So we're going to start by chaining up of two, one and two, turn the work, and into this first chain one space, we need another shell. So that's five double crochets. It's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Then, so we have our space here and our space here. Well, going into, directly from this shell into the next chain one space with a single crochet, chain three, Going into the next space with a single crochet. All right, so now we have the spine right here. So into this first space of the spine, into the first space, we need another shell. So that's five double crochets. So that's two. Three, four, and five. Into the next space of the spine, single crochet, chain three. Into the next space of the spine, single crochet. And then into the next space, another shell. So that's five double crochets. One, two, three, and four, and five. Next space, another single crochet. Chain three. Okay, sometimes it helps if you lift up your, your stitches a little bit into that next space right here. Another single crochet. And then we need, right into this last space, we need another shell of five doubles. So that's one. Two, three, four, and 
five, chain one, and one more double into that same space. All right, and that is the end of row four. So you can see how it's starting to repeat itself already. It's that fast, which I love, believe you me. And so we're going to keep on going, doing a repetition, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that way I'll be confident that you guys have it. You know, I know you guys are good like that. So let's continue on to row five. All right, so for row five, we need to have our V into the beginning here. So I'm going to chain up one, two, three because we need a double and a chain one space. So we've got our three double, sorry, our three chains. And then into that first space, a double crochet. So that makes up our V right there. Chain one. And then into the third double, we need a single crochet. So that's one, two, and three, right into there with a single. chain one. Now into this chain three space, we need a V. So that's double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one after the V. And again, being sure not to count this single crochet as one of our double crochets of the, the shell. So skipping over that single, one, two, three, going into that third with a single, chain one, and we've reached the center where we need to create another spine. So the thing to keep in mind is that as you're going along, that in these chain three spaces along the sides, you're doing Vs. But when you reach the spine, you need another spine. That's what helps with the increase. So like I was saying, you know, we did our chain one, our single crochet into the third. And then after doing another chain, going into the chain three space, and we need another spine. So that's five double crochets separated by chain one spaces. So that's one, chain one, two, chain one. three, chain one, four, chain one, and five, chain one. So we have our spine at the very top yet again. I'll just put a little bit more yarn. Alrighty. So I just love this plum color. Oh, gorgeous. All right, so now into the third double crochet of the next shell, we need another single crochet. So be sure to skip over this single right here, going in one, two, and three into that third one with a single. Chain one. And then into this chain three space, we need another V. So that's double crochet, chain one, and double crochet into that same chain three space, chain one. All right, and then skipping this single crochet, going into the third double, one, two, three, with a single crochet, chain one, and then into this last space right here, we need another V, so that's double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Ta-da! And that is the end of row five. All right, row six. Okay, so the last row, we had our, our Vs, so this row we need our shells. So starting off with a chaining of two, one and two, turn the work into this first 
V space right here. We need five double crochets for a shell. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. <coughs> Excuse me. Into the next space, single crochet, then chain three, single crochet into the next space, and then we've reached another V. So into the V, another shell of five doubles, one, two, three, four, and five. Next space, single crochet, chain three. Next space, single crochet. Okay, and so we've reached the spine again. So in the first space, we need another shell of five doubles. One, two, three, four, and five. Next space, single crochet, chain three. Next space, single crochet. Okay, next space, we need another shell of five doubles. One, two, three, four, and five. Next space, single crochet, chain three. Next space, single crochet. All right, we've reached another V space, so that's another five double crochets to create a shell. That's one, two, three, four, and five. Next space, single crochet, chain three. Next space, single crochet. And then last but not least, we're right at the very end. So that's a shell, then a chain one and a double. So that's five doubles. So that's one, two, three, four, and five, chain one and a double crochet into that same space. All right, let me lay it out for you. All right, and that is the end of row six. So basically it's, I'm gonna do one more of the rows and basically the pattern goes up to row seven, but really it's a matter of just repeating the last two rows over and over and over and over as long as you want to create the, the, the look that you want, you know, as far as the size goes. Now, me personally, I really do prefer this sort of deckled edge, you know, I, I really do like this. Um, however, you could have a more straight edge, which you will get if you end on the following row, which I'm going to do for you. Now, I'm, I'm going to, you know, keep doing this a little bit for you because I really do care and I really do want to make sure that you guys get the pattern. 
and enjoy the fact that it is really that simple since it is really just a two row repeat once you get the hang of it. And you really don't have to agonize over, you know, a seven, nine, 12, 15 row pattern. You know, it's not that hard. And it is with great, great results. I love it. All right, let's keep going. All right, row seven. So we're going to start right in with a chaining up of three. One, two, and three. Counts as our chaining of two plus a chain one space. Going right into that first space with a double. So we have our V. Then chain one. Find the third double crochet and do a single into that third stitch. Chain one. Into the chain three space, we need another V. So that's double, chain one, and double. Chain one. Into the third double crochet. Again, be careful not to go into this single right here, but into the third double, which is right up here. Eventually, you know, you won't have to pick apart your stitches. You'll get a feel for where it is. You know, it'll, it'll come. And then chain one, another V into the chain three space. So that's double, chain one, double, chain one, into the third. It's another single crochet. So that's one, two, and three right in there, single crochet, chain one, and we reached the top again. So instead of doing a V like we're doing on the sides, you know, either or into the chain three spaces, well, into the top, we need another spine. So that's five double crochets separated by chain one spaces. So that's one chain, two chain, three, chain, four, chain, and five, chain. Then again, into the third double crochet, one, two, three, single crochet, chain one, V into the next chain three space. So that's the double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that same chain three space, chain one into the next third. So it's one, two, three, single crochet, chain one, V stitch into the next chain three space. That's double, chain one, and double, chain one, skip that single, one, two, three, single crochet into that third stitch, chain one, and then into the very, very end, right there, V stitch. So that's double, chain one, and double. Ta-da! Oops. Sorry about that. And so yeah, if you want a, a straighter edge, you can end on an odd row. You know, me personally, I like the sort of deckled edge. You know, it's just a matter of personal preference. You know, you can go either way. You know, I won't I won't judge you for it. There are no crochet police here. It's okay. <laughs> So you could end on an odd or an even row, whichever is your preference. And uh, that's really all there is to it. You know, just keep going back and forth, back and forth, you know. And if you get lost, it's like, oh, okay. So this last row was with the Vs. Well, then we need a row with the shells and vice versa, back and forth, back and forth until your piece is as big as you would like it to be. 
So thank you again, Purple Iguana, for another really great pattern. You know, I I always keep an eye on your Ravelry page to see what you're up to, and I'm delighted by this one. It is gorgeous. And, you know, I encourage you guys to give it a try because it's really simple, it's a lot of fun, and it just flies right by. No pun intended. <laughs> so... I hope you liked this. If you did, please give me a little thumbs up button because I appreciate your appreciation. And also, um, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so because I do, I do try to post as often as I can, whether it's crocheting or knitting or audiobook narrations or my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, where I do really fun video game playthrough and commentary. It's a lot of fun. Would love for you to, you know, visit me there as well. And uh, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.